Hello, my name is Dr. Joe Childs. Welcome to our office. Thanks for coming in for your migraine headache consultation. What I'd like to do prior to your consultation is have you watch this short video where I'm going to explain exactly what it is we do uh, to help migraine headaches. I'm going to talk to you about how we help so many patients with chronic tension headaches, chronic migraine headaches, and how we do it without the use of medications. So this video is going to be very informative to, be, to you, especially if, especially if you're dealing with uh, migraine headaches or tension headaches. What I'd like to do is talk to you about the drug-free functional neurology, which is drugless neurology, and functional medicine approach to helping people with migraine headaches. Functional medicine is, is drug-free, uh, nutritional-based care based on your blood work and things of that nature. So if you've been to your doctor, uh, let's say you started having migraine headaches, let's say you've been having them for years, the majority of people that have been uh, or ha have migraine headaches or tension headaches, first thing they usually do is they go to their primary doctor. And their primary doctor may give them some medications and, and uh, uh, some minor medications and things of that nature. And if those medications don't work, then you may go see a neurologist. The neurologist may send you out for blood work. A lot of times that stuff comes up completely normal um, and your doctor tells you they can't find anything wrong with your blood work. Then it, sometimes they'll send you for a brain MRI. The majority of people that have chronic headaches when they get a brain MRI, thank God they don't have a tumor or anything really bad causing their headaches. So most people with chronic headaches, migraines, tension headaches, if they get a brain MRI, they come up negative. You may get some other special tests. And typically what you hear is, you know, we can't find anything wrong. We, don't, we can't see anything in your brain that's causing your headaches. Just take this medication or just take this pill. And that's typically what we see. And then what happens is most people, most people just try this medication, doesn't work. Try that medication, doesn't work. If that one doesn't work, try this one. If that one doesn't work, try this one. You're doing over-the-counter medications. You're doing prescription medications. And it's sort of this sort of cycle uh, or what I consider it the, the medicine treadmill. Um, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about our drug-free program and how we have helped hundreds of headache sufferers without medications using what we call functional neurology and functional medicine. So before we go into the exactly what we do, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist. Now most people are not aware that you can become a chiropractic neurologist, but in chiropractic, just like in medicine, you can specialize. You can become specialized in chiropractic orthopedics, chiropractic neurology, so I chose to do chiropractic neurology. Chiropractic is eight years of schooling, so you have to do your typical four years of undergraduate, then it's another four years after that. And then to become specialized, it's postgraduate education. It's usually about three and a half years to become a chiropractic neurologist. You have to sit for a uh, it's a 12-hour chiropractic neurology board and an oral examination. So I did that uh, to become a chiropractic neurologist. And the difference between a chiropractic neurologist and a medical neurologist is a medical neurologist is going to treat with drugs and surgery, where a chiropractic neurologist is going to treat with specific types of neurological exercises and stimulations to affect areas of the brain that may not be working quite as good as they should, and it also is using nutritional-based care. Um, I'm also fellowshipped in what's called functional neurology. Functional neurology is what chiropractic neurologists do, but you can become fellowship uh, trained in that as well. I have special training in, or a fellowship trained in minor traumatic brain injury and concussion. So within the chiropractic neurology program, you can become even further specialized and do training. It's another two and a half years of training in helping people with traumatic brain injuries and, and concussions. I'm also fellowship trained in vestibular rehabilitation. Vestibular is inner ear rehabilitation. Uh, people that have dizziness and vertigo. I'm trained in childhood neurodevelopmental disorders, trained in nutrition and blood chemistry, and spinal decompression and biomechanics. Before I did all that, I was, I was an exercise physiologist. I went to Penn State University, and uh, I, I am trained in chiropractic pediatrics, so we also see children with various types of issues. So let's talk about what makes us different from every other doctor you've been to for your headaches, whether they're migraine, whether they're tension, whether they're cluster headaches. We're going to talk about what, how we're different. Number one is we're going to leave no stone unturned in trying to find the underlying cause of your condition. We're going to look at you neurologically, metabolically, which is nutritionally, and structurally, meaning we're going to look at your spinal health. And, and, and usually people that have headaches or chronic headaches, it's usually a combination of structural, metabolic, and neurological problems. 
So again, we treat headaches metabolically, which is nutritionally, neurologically, and structurally. The important thing for you to understand is there is a drug-free solution to helping you have less headaches or no headaches at all. So the key points are migraines are correctable. They're, it's a correctable situation in, in a very big percentage of cases. Chronic migraines are not reversible with drugs. Drugs just mask the symptoms. They don't address the cause. So that's a big issue. That's how we're different. Now there's two really main reasons for your, or two general big reasons for why you could have headaches. You can have an ablative or hard problem seen on imaging, or you can have a functional physiological problem that's not seen on imaging. An ablative problem usually means that you have something like a tumor, or something like you had a stroke, or you have something physically that they can see on an MRI. The majority of people that have these problems don't end up in our office uh, because they have bigger problems to deal with. But usually if we can't find anything on MRI, most people go get MRI and their brain looks perfectly normal, there must be a physiological problem or a functional problem with the way your brain and nervous system is functioning causing you to have this consistent head pain. The way a medical doctor will try to, to alter your physiology is with chemicals, in you ingesting drugs and, or things of that nature, and how a functional neurologist tries to alter it is to use specific types of exercises and stimulations to improve brain function. We're going to talk about that in detail. Now we don't treat with medications in the office primarily for two reasons. The first reasons are many medications can cause rebound headaches. So a lot of people that take medications, uh, what will happen is they're going to get rebound headaches or more headaches secondary to the medications they take. A couple of the big ones are, are the triptans, the sumatriptans, uh, and anything with caffeine in it, they're big rebounders. So when you have a migraine headache, you want to get rid of it as, fa as fast as you can. So we don't uh, fault you for wanting to take a medication because you know people need the medications. Med migraines are incredibly t tough on people. My mother had migraines when she when uh, when I was younger, and I can remember. Uh, I mean, she would be wiped out for the day or two or three days, and it usually usually would happen at very unopportune times, uh, such as you know the holidays or something like that. And you know, next thing you know, my mom's in, in the bed in a dark room, so it can really affect you. So I'm not faulting you for medications, but we, it's important to be looking for the true cause of why you have the problem and not just masking it with the medications. If you use medications sparingly you can do okay with them. It's when you start using them so frequently that you can cause rebound headaches. And one of the big problems is, it's very hard for us to determine, is your headache a headache? Uh, is it a true migraine? Or are you dealing with one of these medicine-induced rebound headaches? So many of the common rebounding headache medications work by constricting. What they do is they constrict the blood vessels. But what m goes up must come down. That's a saying. So any drug that is constricting those blood vessels in your brain eventually those blood vessels are going to then redilate again and that's the rebound that occurs. Uh, so what comes up must come down and it's because you have this revasodilation effect. The other thing about medications is medications don't get to the root cause like we talked about and they have side effects. So let's say your, your uh, migraine headaches are caused by a problem with the right side of your brain. How can you ingest a chemical to affect both sides of your brain? So a chemical doesn't really fix the cause of the problem. Okay. So how are we different? Now our approach is to decrease or eliminate your headaches by increasing your threshold or point to where you get a migraine. We want to increase that. Um, do you have a migraine? Through drug-free neurostructural care. We also want to decrease your triggers to having a migraine through evidence-based functional medicine and nutritional protocols. Medications are used to cover up the migraine symptoms which are just warning signs that your nervous system and body are not functioning properly. They're not intended to really reverse the dysfunction or fix anything. Einstein said uh, that the definition of insanity, one thing that he, that he came up with, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So we have migraine sufferers that really are not getting great results with the medications, but they just they really don't know that there's anything out there differently, and so they continue to do the same thing over and over again. So again, we want to treat you nutritionally, structurally, and neurologically. We'll talk about that in detail here in just a bit. Functional neurology, neurology is we want to change your brain. If we can change, we can change your life by changing your brain. So we're going to look at overall brain function to determining which areas of your brain is causing your migraine headaches. 
Current research on migraine headache points to what is known as autonomic nervous system dysfunction. The autonomic nervous system is, is the part of your nervous system that's going to control all your glands, it's going to call, control all of your internal organs, but it's also going to control blood flow to your body, and more uh, particularly in relationship to migraine, it's going to control blood flow to your head and to your, uh, uh, to your skull, okay, uh, or to your, to your cranium and, and all the blood vessels that are in there. The location of the control center of the autonomic, which means automatic nervous system, lies in the brain stem and also another area known as the hypothalamus, which is above the brain stem. So this is your brain stem here. This, this here in the back is the cerebellum. What's not here is the, what you don't see here is the, the actual brain that you see here. Uh, this is the lower brain stem, which is the pons and medulla, and then there's an upper brain stem called the mesencephalon. We'll make it easier, just call it upper brain stem, lower brain stem. Okay, the upper brain stem is the sympathetic nervous system, the lower brain stem houses the parasympathetic nervous system. We'll talk about that. Um, actually, let's talk about that here. So your parasympathetic nervous system is going to be the part of your nervous system that's going to be more relaxed. It's going to relax your body, it's going to allow you to sleep, it's going to allow you to digest, it's going to increase blood flow to all your organs and things of that nature. The sympathetic nervous system is what is known as the fight or flight part of your nervous system. It constricts blood flow to your organs, it increases blood flow to your periphery, it's, it's more the aroused part of the nervous system. You want to have more parasympathetic function than excessive sympathetic function. Now you've got a left brain and you have a right brain. You have two sides of your brain. So this obviously is right brain, left brain. Underneath here is the brain stem and this is the cerebellum. So the interesting thing is your right cerebellum fires to your left brain and your left cerebellum fires to your right brain. And the messages from your brain come down to the lower brain stem. The lower brain stem is what we want firing and functioning well. That makes parasympathetic function decreases your chance of headaches, and it inhibits or slows down this upper brain stem, which is the sympathetic brain stem, and when that's wound up too quickly, it can cause you to have headaches. So let's say, let's say that this right cerebellum does not work super good for any number of reasons. That can affect the brain's function, which can affect the lower brain stem's function, and that can cause you to have this overfiring upper brain stem, which can cause you to have migraine headaches and different types of things. So here's some things that can happen when, you're, when your brain stem becomes overactive in the upper area or the mesencephalon. You can have chronic pain and chronic fatigue. Migraine headaches and light sensitivity can be caused by an overactive brain stem. We do things in this office to slow down and calm down that overactive upper brain stem. It can create blurred vision. People can sweat too much. Difficulty falling asleep because that upper brain stem has what's called the mesencephalic reticular activating system can cause you to have insomnia, heart palpitations, irritable bowel syndromes, things of that nature. There's all the things we just talked about. So when you have an overfiring upper brain stem, that will fire down to a part of your spinal cord, make that fire too fast, make your adrenal glands create too many stress hormones or what are called catecholamines and then that fires the C nerve fibers which are your pain nerve fibers can make you have chronic pain can make you more pain sensitive can make you more headache sensitive an overfiring upper brain stem can affect the blood vessels in the brain causing them to dilate which will cause a stretching of the nerve mesh around the blood vessels and bam you have a migraine headache this is why the drugs work on these blood vessels by constricting them, but then boom, they come back again when you have a rebound. Overfiring mesencephalon can create insomnia because it causes the sympathetic nervous system. It's very hard to sleep when your brain is aroused. So we see migraine patients tend to be a little bit more of insomnia-based patients and things of that nature. Not always though. And also fatigue is something we see. And then we get overfiring brain stem. Uh, can cause IBS, can cause urinary tract issues. So there's more than just migraines that can be uh, caused by this. Overfiring brain stem, the upper brain stem is where it controls the diameter of the pupil. So usually people become very light sensitive when they're having a migraine and that's because the pupils will get big and wide, let too much light in, and that overfiring upper brain stem creates this light sensitivity. And we see this quite a bit with our migraine patients, especially when they're having a migraine. Okay. So what we do is we combine the latest research-backed 
neurological examinations and advanced neurological testing for patients with migraines. So we can do special tests to find out which area of your brain is causing the problem, okay? Which area of your brain is not functioning well, lending yourself to having this imbalance in your brainstem. We like to look at eye movements, okay? The eyes, eye movements are the only human physiological function that involves every part of your brain. So we can look at eye movements using something called VNG, and we can uh, diagnose which areas of your brain are either weak or overfiring, and, and so on and so forth. We'll get a printout. We use this advanced diagnostics, and we will find out exactly which areas, based on eye movements, how your brain is functioning, how the left brain is functioning versus the right brain, how the cerebellum, how the brain stem is functioning. We can get a lot of data and information. Now, migraine patients have something called central pain sensitization. Central meaning your central nervous system. So what can happen is this is going to make all of your free nerve endings act like pain nerve endings. And this is why just touching your skin when you have a migraine headache can be very painful. What happens to patients with migraines is they get this uh, and it causes them chronic, uh, chronic headaches. So the blood vessels in the brain and its coverings are wired up to this area in your brain stem, it's in your brain stem, called the trigeminal nucleus. And you can Google this on, uh, you can Google trigeminal nucleus and migraines and you'll find oodles of research and papers on this. But the trigeminal nucleus stretches from the brain stem all the way down into the neck and it re receives pain sensations from the blood vessels in your brain. When the trigeminal area and its neighbors of the brain stem are unstable and not functioning the way they should be functioning, uh, or not functioning optimally, optimally it's going to gradually drift these, these neurons closer to threshold, making the pain pathways more sensitive and causing you to be more prone to migraine headaches. This is going to lower your brain's threshold to the migraine and, and triggers like foods, like inflammation, like stress, lack of sleep, alcohol, dehydration, chocolate, different things like that can make you more susceptible to a migraine. So when your brain's threshold is lower because you have abnormal brainstem functioning, what happens is you become uh, more unstable and more susceptible to, re to triggers and this is called central sensitization. Signals from the brainstem and upper neck nerves affect the blood vessels in your head, face, and neck causing you to become swollen and inflamed, causing you your headache. The trigeminal nucleus will also fire a wave-like pattern which will affect higher cortical centers and uh, cause the throbbing pain of the migraine. So it's kind of like this. You have this, this cup, okay? And so people without migraines or people without headaches, their threshold to, the he to having a headache is up here. Everybody has the chance to develop a migraine or a, or a headache but it t some people have a threshold that's here and some people have a threshold that's here. This is the trigger bucket. So what happens is all these different triggers, stress, foods that you're sensitive to, changes in the atmospheric pressure. You know, some people say it's raining today and, or it's cold today. Or, you know, everybody's a little different. But these are these triggers that, that build up. And then once they hit your threshold, bam, you have a headache. So people that have a threshold that's down here, because of all the stuff I just talked about, dysfunction in the brain, what happens is they're so close, so all it takes is a few little triggers and bam. One day you may have a chocolate bar, it may not cause the headache, but if, you're, if your threshold, if your triggers are here, your threshold's here, then bam, you eat a piece of chocolate, because some people, uh, chocolate could be sensitive, or it could be red wine, or it could be stress. But what, if your threshold's up here, it's going to require a lot of triggers before you get a migraine. So, like an overflowing cup, when your migraine triggers or exceed your neurological threshold, bang, you have a migraine, okay? So what we want to do is we want to reduce the triggers and increase your threshold uh, so you don't get a migraine. So you reduce your chance of migraines. So we use breakthrough drug-free neurological therapies to improve your brain function and increase your neurological threshold to having migraine headaches. So here's some things that we may do to increase your threshold and make you less susceptible to migraines. Number one, oxygen therapy. We'll put patients on oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy slows down the upper brain stem and uh, it also increases the firing of the parts of your brain that you want to function well 
and reduce your chance of migraine. We'll do specific eye exercises to, inf to affect and improve brain weakness, uh, brain areas that are weak that we determine. We'll use something called somatosensory evoked potentials to the tongue as well as to the face to increase the stability of brain stem uh, network. So your brain stem, there's nuclei that control a lot of your facial sensations or your tongue sensations, so we can do stimulations to those areas to increase and make plasticity or better function in those areas to increase your threshold to migraines. We can do something called insufflation therapy, which is gentle stimulation of the inner ear to stimulate brain stem nuclei. We can do vibration therapy to, to stimulate the cerebellum, proprioceptive or joint stimulation uh, to affect the brain. We can do vestibular or inner ear stimulation using balance therapy, advanced muscle retraining, interactive metronome, which, tr which trains the frontal lobes of the brain and the cerebellum, eye lights or, uh, or, or using uh, glasses or using optokinetics or hemistim program or correcting the spine or taking pressure off the spine with spinal decompression therapy. Not every patient needs all these things. That's why we do the examination to figure out exactly what you need. Uh, we, we will look at the spine. We are chiropractors, so again, the structural side, the neurological side, which we just talked about, and the nutritional side, which we're going to get into in a, in a little bit. Uh, this person here, this is a side view of the neck. You should have a good curve in the neck. The red line is where this person was. The black line is where they should be. And this was after a course of care, and we corrected this person's spine, uh, which takes pressure off the joints and nerves. So there's different phases of spinal degeneration. A normal spine should have a curve in it. There should be a curve in the neck. So when we look at somebody's spine, there should be a nice curve in the neck. If you have a loss of curve in the neck, that will put pressure on these joints in your spine, pressure on this brain stem and spinal cord, and that will affect the spinal trigeminal nucleus and make you more pain sensitive. This girl right here had migraine headaches when she came in. If that stays there long enough, eventually that creates arthritis and degeneration. And then we come in here, this is severe degeneration. So that's kind of like the, the tooth charts that you see or the, or the gum and gingivitis charts when you can see when you go to the dentist. The same kind of thing happens in the spine. And that can lead you to have tension headaches, migraine headaches. Uh, forward head posture. So. Having a posture like this, we see a lot of this, especially patients that work on computers all day or sit and text all day or look at Facebook all day. You can start to have this abnormal structure where the ear, the center of the head is not over top of the shoulders. This is normal. This is abnormal. This can create tension headaches and make you more prone to things like migraines. So this is an example of somebody that came in. This is how far forward this person's head was on their body. And this is a post x-ray after we corrected it headaches, neck pain dramatically reduced through spinal care. So treating headaches, there's two essentials. The brain requires two things to function properly. It requires fuel and activation. Fuel is in the, uh, in the source of glucose and proper nutrition and oxygen. And activation is neurological stimulation. So we'll do brain-based rehab to affect the weak areas that we found in the brain and by doing that, it stabilizes those brainstem and brain networks, which causes you to have more normal, more optimal function in your blood vessels, which increases your threshold to allow you to handle more and more and more triggers and have less and less migraine headaches. So we treat, uh, treat headaches metabolically, which is nutritionally, and neurostructurally. There is a drug-free solution. So metabolic care. So we do specific individualized nutritional recommendations based on your blood work and based on special testing. We use the latest functional medicine support to improve healthy nervous system function. We're going to test you, do you have hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar? A lot of migraine patients have low blood sugar, and that causes their upper brain stem to fire too much because it makes their adrenal glands fire too much because they have low blood sugar. We'll look at nutritional and fatty acid deficiencies, low blood oxygen or anemia, Inflammation. Inflammation is the big thing that we see, and it's a big buzzword that people talk about, going on anti-inflammatory diets and such. People that are inflamed all the time, what happens is, is it makes their, fills up their trigger bucket halfway, and now they're so close to having a migraine. Food sensitivities. A lot of patients are sensitive to foods, especially migraine patients. Migraine patients are some of our most sensitive patients, and that creates inflammations. Problems with your hormonal profiles. 
looking at your estrogens, looking at your thyroid, looking at your cortisol, which is your stress hormones, leaky gut. Leaky gut is, is how, uh, how good your digestive tract is at separating the food it's trying to digest with the inside world of your, of your bloodstream. We'll talk about that in more detail. Dysbiosis is having normal bacteria in your gut. And autoimmunity means self-immunity, meaning your immune system is affecting you. We have to check all these things. Most of the time, most medical doctors don't look for these things because their mechanism of treatment is going to be just a drug. Just give you a drug and... Uh, and they're not really looking for the cause of the problem, so to speak. Especially once they find out that it's not a tumor, not a stroke, not something really bad in your brain, um, then they just try to alter your physiology with chemicals. Okay, we try to alter your physiology. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, my doctor already told me my blood work was fine. We always hear this all the time. A medical doctor said everything is fine. And that's because they are using uh, the, those normal ranges our lab ranges are very inaccurate and bell curves are used. We like to use the functional values. Those values that you see when you look at your blood work, the reference ranges, those reference ranges come from uh, everybody giving blood. And, you, and if you look at the people that are giving blood, if you go to a Quest or a LabCorp, it's not the most healthiest people as far as a population base. So you're the average of all those people giving blood. The functional ranges are the, the, the average of blood work values for people that have absolutely no symptoms or disease. So you want to be uh, equal or average to, or in the middle to the healthy people, not the middle of the unhealthy people. So for example, you could have blood sugar that's you know 105 and they'll say that that's normal. Uh, when it's actually not normal, it needs to be somewhere between 85 and 99. Chronic inflammation uh, is something we have to look at. Inflammation is kind of like a fire going on inside your body. It makes everything achier. It's going to make you more prone to having migraines because it's going to provide a very strong trigger that gets you closer to that threshold to having a migraine headache. So we want to do some testing of inflammation markers. Again, like an overflowing cup, when your triggers exceed your neurological threshold, bam, you have a headache. So if, you're, if your threshold is way down here, then you're going to have a problem. We're going to do structural care, we're going to do neurological based care to get your threshold way up here, and then we're going to try to find out which triggers are your biggest ones, and we want to try to reduce those. Common causes of inflammation, which is one of the biggest triggers, are food sensitivities, inflammatory foods, leaky gut, hidden gut infections, not enough good healthy fatty acids, high insulin due to blood sugar problems, whether it's hypoglycemia or pre-diabetes or diabetes, hormone imbalances. Migraine headaches can be caused by or made worse by a hidden autoimmune uh, disorder. Autoimmune means your own immune system is attacking your body. Your immune system is supposed to attack bacteria and viruses so you don't get colds or you get over colds and sicknesses and cancer cells. That's what your immune system is supposed to do. But sometimes our immune system turns haywire and starts attacking our own bodily tissues creating inflammation or autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases are like MS, lupus, Hashimoto's, uh, things of that nature, rheumatoid arthritis. What we want to do, some people will have antibodies to their own body. They don't have any of those diseases yet, making them more prone to having headaches. Headaches are just a symptom of you having too much inflammation, you having abnormal neurological functioning. Leaky gut. I'm gonna, I could do a whole seminar on leaky gut. I'm going to explain it to you just in, in, in general. Your, uh, your gut wall or your intestinal wall is supposed to provide a barrier between your bloodstream, which is inside your body, and the food that you're trying to digest, which is outside of your body. There is supposed to be very tight junctions between the cells in your, in your, uh, in your digestive tract. So the only thing that should flow through there is fully digested foods. So you eat a, you eat a steak and it turns from a, from a steak to a protein, down to a peptide, down to an amino acid. The only thing that should fit through there is an amino acid. But if the walls become leaky, then what will go through your gut is full protein molecules or peptides, and then your immune system will react to these unfully digested. It's kind of like a hole in your, in, in, your, in your screen door. This is microscopic. You can't see this on colonoscopy. You have to do a special test for it. it that will create gut inflammation. If you have an inflamed gut, you will have an inflamed brain, which makes your threshold 
uh, go down and make sure make, make sure you have more uh, migraine headaches and, and more more chance of having headaches for sure. We can test your uh, we'll do a stool ecology pro t profile to determine do you have any healthy bacteria. Do you have pathogenic bacteria? Do you have parasites? You'll, you'll be surprised how many people have parasites creating inflammation in their gut. So we use anti-inflammatory nutritional protocols to help our patients have inflam who have inflammatory or autoimmune-based headaches. We do anti-inflammatory diet, specific diet and supplement protocols for leaky gut, sp specific diet and supplement protocols to decrease brain and gut inflammation, specific diet and supplement protocols for autoimmunity and food sensitivity testing and diet recommendations. So again, how are we different? We want to decrease or eliminate your headaches by increasing your threshold to having a migraine through drug-free neurostructural care, which we just talked about, increasing your threshold. We also want to decrease your triggers to having a migraine through evidence-based functional medicine and nutritional protocols that decrease inflammation. And it's very, very effective. Medications are not doing any of that. They're just covering the symptoms and have a very high likelihood of have having rebound. So we combine the functional neurological therapies, structural spinal care, and functional medicine to address the root cause of the problem. Our results, the program is extremely successful in part by the unique brain-based and metabolic approach that we do but also because of who we accept for care. We do a very thorough neurological exam, including uh, eye, eye, eye testing, neurological testing, spinal x-rays, nutritional workup. We look at your blood, vest, or your, blood, um, your blood work to determine and see how you're doing uh, to see if you're somebody we can help. With our drug-free approach, it is p very much possible to dramatically improve or eliminate totally your headaches. So here's the deal, step two and step three. Um, you came in for the consultation. I'm gonna be coming in, or Dr. Durr's gonna be coming in to meet you in just a minute. We're gonna to talk to you about your specific set of concerns, sit down and listen to you, find out what you've been through, how often you get the headaches, what causes them, when they're worst, how they're affecting your life. We wanna understand that. Then we're gonna answer any of your questions, let you know exactly uh, what we do, uh, and just sit down with you, try to understand what you're going through. But then we're going to offer you the opportunity to come in for a functional neurological exam and eye movement testing, which is step two. And then step three is our report of findings where we will go over everything that we found, let you know if we can help you, and exactly what it will take to help you improve your headaches, get rid of your headaches, and exactly what's causing your headaches. And then we let you know if we accept your case. If we don't accept your case, we find something uh, that we don't like or we don't think we can help you, we'll send you off to the appropriate uh, practitioner. If we think we can help you, we'll tell you exactly what that will take. So that's basically everything I wanted to explain to you. Thanks for listening to this video. Like I said, either myself or Dr. Durr will be coming in in just a minute to sit down and uh, talk to you about your specific set of concerns with your headaches, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you very much for listening, and I, we look forward to meeting you here in just a few minutes. Thank you. Jennifer, what health complaints did you have prior to coming into the office? Well, originally I came in because I had injured my neck working out and had a lot of pain, couldn't turn it easily. It was very stiff and uncomfortable. And then I also came because I've been suffering from migraines for several years and had about 10 or more a month that I was dealing with. Um, how long did you suffer with that? With migraines? Yes. Ever since, really, I had my children, I had migraines, and they had gotten progressively worse to the point that I needed a prescription medication to deal with them every month. Wow. Now, how did your neck pain and your migraines affect you in your life as far as your time and your happiness? They were very painful and debilitating in a lot of ways. Um, part of my job is being on the computer, and I could only be on there for a couple of hours before getting um, distracted by the headaches. I needed to take medication for them. They had gotten so bad. A lot of times I needed to lie down. I needed to be in a dark room. I couldn't be outside in the sun or doing things with my kids. So it, it got in the way of a lot of, of my happiness. Well, since having care with Dr. Durr and Dr. Childs, what's improved? Well, my neck pain is gone. That was the first to improve. I did a, a series of treatments, and that took away a lot of the, the neck pain and gave me back the mobility, and I don't uh, have any problems with that anymore. 
The migraines have improved greatly, and recently I went an entire month without one migraine, which is the first time that's happened to me in as long as I can remember. So I had a completely pain-free month. And how is that impacting your life? It's making my life a lot better and a lot easier. I feel great. Fantastic. Any other thoughts on your experience at the office, the doctors and the staff? Um, everybody at the office has been wonderful. Uh, Dr. Durr and Dr. Childs are so great, uh, very friendly, easy to talk to. They really worked with me. Uh, we tried several different things to get rid of the headaches, and they, they seem very caring. And everybody that works here is the same way, and it's a great place to come. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts, Jen. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Cynthia Tier, a patient in our neurologic and metabolic program. How are you today, Cynthia? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Um, so what were some of your health complaints prior to coming in our office? I came to see Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr because I was at the end of my rope. I was completely frustrated with other physicians who could not help me with my complaints which were stiff neck, numbness in the left side of my face, almost constant headaches, and pain in my back and my hip. Okay. And how long were you suffering with these conditions? For the migraines, 30 years. Mm -hmm. For the back and the for the back and the hip, two and a half years, almost three years. All right, and so how did that affect your life with all those conditions you were dealing with? I can't tell you how many family occasions I missed because of either migraines or my back going out. I was not able to attend not one, but two family marriages because I was not able to go physically. It was terrible. So since having care with Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr, what has improved? I have no more pain in my neck. I have no more numbness in the left side of my face. Most important for me, I have no more migraines, which I suffered for 30 years. I was on medication for 30 years for migraines. Wow. I was able to discover through an elimination diet that I am, am allergic to wheat in any form. I do not have celiac disease and many people ask me, oh is it because I have celiac, di do I have celiac disease? No, I don't have celiac disease. I do not have a leaky gut. I have an allergy to wheat in any form and it is the wheat that caused the migraines all of these years and no one, no other physician could, could pinpoint it. Hmm. Well that's great. So how is all this impacting your life now? Well, I would like to add mm -hmm. that I consulted at least three orthopedists about the pain in my hip and my back. I was told many different stories, uh, such as, I have fibromyalgia, and that is what's causing the pain. I don't have fibromyalgia. I was told by several orthopedists that they could not find what was wrong with me, and I was told the last visit was I should sit on a rubber ring, and that would give me some relief from my back. And I came to see Dr. Childs because I came in desperation. I needed help. No one else could help me. I was desperate. I told Dr. Childs that the first time I saw him. And I think you just asked, how has it affected my life? Yes. And the improvement in my body and my mind has affected my life in ways that I can't even begin to describe to you. And let me just tell you a few of them. I have no more brain fog, meaning I can, I can think clearly, I can make decisions clearly, I can focus clearly on my whatever I'm doing on my jobs. Since I am retired and I came here after retirement to see Dr. Childs, I believe right now I can now go back to work, get a job, stay focused, earn a living, whereas before, for, for years, I could not hold on a job. 
Um, as far as family goes, I am now able to to join them in celebrations instead of having to say to them, I can't go, I have a headache. Just last year I was not able to go to a niece's wedding because at the very last moment while I tried to move a piece of luggage, my back went out mm -hmm. and it was terrible for me to have to to have to lose that time with my family. And even last year, I was not able to travel from Pennsylvania to Washington State because I could not handle my luggage and I missed my nephew's wedding. Hmm. And these are only a few cir circumstances that I can tell you right now that I missed. Now, I can't even imagine having any difficulty going to any family function. Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you how happy this has made me. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. All right. Um, any other thoughts on your experience at the office, on the doctors or the staff? I could probably talk to you for at least an hour on how the treatments here have helped me mentally, intellectually, physically. The staff has always been there for me no matter what the occasion. If I needed something, if I needed help, if I needed direction on what should I do next in the office, if I needed supplements, which uh, Dr. Childs ordered for me and which basically changed uh, my life in terms of supplements, how I felt nutritionally, the energy level I had. I had no more fatigue. I was able to walk again instead of having to sometimes use a cane. Mm -hmm. I can now walk several miles a day, whereas before I could not even walk two blocks. Mm -hmm. It has changed my relationship with almost everyone I know. Um, even though I started teaching French to seniors before I came here, I am able to teach so much more clearly and have them understand me so much better than before when I was not able to speak clearly to them or give them clear instructions on what they were supposed to do for homework. And also, I belong to a choir in my church. I am so much more able to focus clearly on the music and what notes was I singing rather than trying to guess on what the next note was. I could talk to you much more about this than you know than before. I speak more clearly, I think more clearly. Uh, before I came to see Dr. Childs, I was not even able to lie on the, the, on the right side of my body. I could not sleep on the right side of my body. Now I have no more problems with my back. Also my headaches. I would wake up every single day with a headache. It may not have been a migraine, but it was a headache. The migraines would happen at least twice a week. This went on for 30 years. It was only when I found out that I had a sensitivity to wheat. Once I took the wheat out of my diet, I had no more migraines. It was a miracle, a miracle. People who know me and have known me for a long time, look at me, listen to me, hear me, and tell me I am a different person. They don't even think that they can't imagine that I am the same person. I'm so totally different. They have to look at me twice to see that I'm really, uh, uh, really me, the old me, and not the ne not the me that was always in pain and suffering and missed family outings and always had excuses for why I could not do this, that, or something else, or why I could not work, why I could not hold on a steady job. It's because of coming here and, and, and going through the adjustments with Dr. Childs, following the nutrition program, following the exercises that were given to me at home especially, I was able to create this new self for myself and I am so happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Stu Tompkins. Good morning, Stu. Can you tell me what health complaints you had prior to coming to the office? 
Before coming to the office, I used to get migraine headaches. They were cluster headaches to where they were so severe sometime in a business meeting or something. Many years ago, I would tear in my eye and put the hand on the top of my head. You could feel it was a vascular muscular headache that uh, was unbearable and it would eventually go away or I probably shot myself. And How long did you have that still? Oh, for quite a few years. I used to go to some chiropractors years ago to, to try to correct it and there was no avail. I'd go in and say, why am I coming here? I mean, they're not doing me any good. But I was introduced to the two, two doctors here at Corrective Chiropractic and they didn't only fix me, they took x-rays of my spine and my neck and showed me the results and after coming in the very beginning religiously they showed how they improved it and the migraines went away. Now how did those migraines affect your life? How did they affect your time and your happiness, sleep, being able to just get around and do things and your job and family? Well they were unbearable because I could be in a business meeting and they would come on and it was unbearable to where you couldn't concentrate or do anything. Uh, as I said eventually they would subside but sometimes it would take an hour, other times it would take all night and they were, they were severe and I, I just couldn't stand it anymore. I had gone to even a neurologist who supposedly uh, gave me a, a, a you know, prescription of some medication but that uh, didn't seem to accomplish them. Now since having care with Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr, what has improved? Well, I think it's improved to a great extent. I don't get them anymore. I haven't had them. I've been coming to Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr now I think it's going on seven years just for maintenance. We used to come uh, religiously in the very beginning until they accomplished it, but they get, kept me in such good shape I continue to come twice a month now just for maintenance and I think I'm doing pretty well. Where I'll be 87 next week or next month and I'm playing tennis three days a week so I give them all the credit in the world. So I, I think they're, they're great, great people and have a great organization. That's awesome. Are there any other thoughts on your experience at the office, the doctors, and the staff? Oh yes, the staff is excellent. They've been here for a long time and they're very courteous and very knowledgeable. The other experience I've had, my son is quite an avid tennis player, uh, a very good tennis player in a 4 or 5 rating, and he put his arm out where it's like a, almost a rotator cup problem and the orthopedic surgeons he went to wanted to operate. I told him to come out here. They suggested he stop playing tennis for six months, which almost killed him, but to make a long story short, they started to work on Bill, and they had him back playing tennis in about two and a half months, and he's now uh, a very avid tennis player and hasn't had a problem since. That's wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Stu, for your thoughts. Anytime. I think the organization is wonderful, and anybody should come if they have problems. Thank you. We are here with Merv and Charlene Burkhart. And Merv, we'll start with you. What health complaints did you have prior to coming to the office? The main reason I contacted uh, the office was for migraine headaches. Um, I had uh, tremors on my right side and my head, and I also had an injured shoulder that uh, I was dealing with for probably five years. And that's how long you had the conditions? Migraines I've had uh, close to 40 years. Um, the shoulder was about five years. The tremors were maybe the last two years, three years, something like that. Okay, and what did the migraines and the tremors affect most in your life? Um, well, the migraines Without Imitrex, um, I would lose a day, um, sometimes a day and a half. Um, the tremors uh, were very annoying, but other than that, um, it, it didn't really affect my life other than being uh, somewhat annoying. Okay. And since having care with Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr, what has improved? Well, my migraines um, have been reduced 50%. The, um, the shoulder pain 
disappeared after about, I think it was two to three weeks of treatment. I just realized one day that I didn't have shoulder pain anymore. Um, and that has uh, been great. Okay, and how but, has that impacted your life? Well, I get better, better sleep for one, and uh, I'm uh, able to uh, go about my day uh, much better. And uh, the tremors, uh, they have completely um, disappeared. And I'm not sure how long that took anymore, but I'd say within the first month, maybe. Um, that has been eliminated also. Okay, and any other thoughts on your experience at the office um, regarding the doctors, the staff? Well, the doctors, I would say, are on the cutting edge for sure. Um, uh, excellent um, plan, excellent adjustments um, from a chiropractic standpoint. Um, I would say they're as good as I've ever seen or better. And the staff is um, very professional, very helpful, very knowledgeable, uh, very um, respectful. Okay. It's been great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marv. You're welcome. And now we will move over with Charlene. Charlene, what health complaints did you have prior to coming to the office? Rheumatoid arthritis, uh, neck problems, um, and I had some foot problems when I started. Okay, and how long did you have these conditions? Well, I've had rheumatoid arthritis for 15 years. It's been pretty severe, and um, neck problems, I've had that most of my life, and the foot problems have just started in the last two, three years, I would say. Okay, and what did these various conditions affect most in your life? Mm -hmm. I had a lot of pain. Uh, I had a hard time living, really. And since I've come here, um, it's like I've gotten my life back. I have almost no inflammation whatsoever. Uh, one of the best things that's happened to me is I have no pain and I have no inflammation anymore. And I've gone, at, gone down on uh, many medications and I'm getting rid of a few and I plan to keep going down. Okay, and since having care with Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr, um, I understand that they improved and anything else that you want to add to that? I can get around a lot better. Uh, it, I feel like I'm about 10 years younger. Mm -hmm. I've uh, lost weight and that has helped a lot. Okay, and how is that impacting your life? Well, I can get a lot more done. I can get it done faster. <laughs> uh, I've just, I'm just enjoying life much more now than I did before. Okay. That's been good. And uh, for you, uh, what are your thoughts on your experience at the office and mm -hmm. with the doctors and the staff? It has been great. I think the doctors are very good. Uh, they know what they're doing and they help people and they're very friendly and I just love the staff and the doctors. I love them too. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's much like a, a family situation here and I, I enjoy that. Okay. They treat you like a real person, like they care. Right. And is there anything that you both would like to say together? Mm -hmm. Well Charlene kind of echoed uh, the, the turning back the clock. It's with the diet program uh, I lost quite a bit of weight too and um, yeah it, it's like it turned back maybe 10 years, I don't know. <laughs> That's been good. I would recommend it That's to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.
Good morning, Ed. How are you? Good morning, Cheryl. I'm doing fine. Good. Ed, can you tell me about what health complaints you had prior to coming to corrective chiropractic? Well, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which is kind of a catch-all for all the aches and pains, and so they could give me medicine. And I saw an ad in the paper there for Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr. It said, if you have fibromyalgia, come see us. And I came to the workshop, and I was interested, and uh, I had aches and pains throughout my body, different places, different times, as well as uh, severe headaches and uh, sometimes cramps, you know, tr uh, trouble walking, so on and so forth. And, um, uh, I just was, uh, felt like I was hit by a truck many days. I couldn't even get out of bed. That's pretty much, <laughs> I, I was in misery. <laughs> and how long were you troubled with fibromyalgia? Actually, it was over about a 10-year period. Mm -hmm. It just kept getting, you know, progressively worse, you know, not able to sleep more than two or three hours, you know, because of the pains and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, inability to be able to do the activities that I wanted to do. Uh, like I said, you know, it, uh, over that period from, you know, about mid-1990, you know, forward it just seemed to keep getting worse and worse. And you mentioned it that you weren't able to do the activities that you needed to do. Now um, how else did it affect your life? Mm -hmm. Well <laughs> I never I, I never seemed to be able to get the things done that I wanted to get done. You know I've spent too much time in pain and just feeling really crummy so I felt that I was uh, you know losing a lot of quality time and the inability to be able to play golf and tennis and go skiing, you know, even taking long walks like I used to like to do. So, uh, you know, it just, every, everything was interfering with what I wanted to do. <laughs> now, since having care with Dr. Durr and Dr. Childs, what's improved? Well, we've got my, we realized uh, from the x-rays that my spine was really way out of whack and, uh, you know, over the, uh, it's been about four months, We've got that back, you know, we're halfway back to where it belongs, both, you know, from the back and the, and the side, but, but it was way out of whack. But uh, what I've noticed is that I don't have all the aches and pains that I did have. As a matter of fact, I was able, uh, probably after about a month, to give up the Celebrex, which is what, you know, the doctor, medical doctor prescribed for me. And I was happy to put my pills in the jar there with the rest of them and say, you know, I like chiropractic, it seems to work for me. Um, we've also been doing the, uh, you know, the oxygen, which is helping me. Um, we're still, still working. I'm a work in progress, but I can tell you, I, mean, I feel about 90% better than I did before. Uh, I'm still not necessarily out there swinging golf clubs and all. I haven't been pushing, but on the other hand, uh, you know, I don't feel like I've been run over by a truck all the time. The headaches are gone. I hardly have, you know, headaches anymore. And, uh, you know, don't have all the aches and pains in the extremity. So, you know, whatever we're doing, the sublux, uh, the correcting these subluxations, is definitely, definitely helping me. Right. So this is really impacting your life for the better. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I was kind of like, I wasn't a lot of fun to be around because I didn't even really enjoy being around me. Oh, God. <laughs> Needless to say, it's definitely improved in all areas. Uh, you know, as far as you know. It's like I, at least I'm more. I'm having more quality time with the family, doing the things I want to do, um, and I'd like to say even just being able to sleep and not have these headaches has been a great improvement. Any other thoughts on our office, um, the doctors and the staff here at Corrective Chiropractic? Well, I can say truthfully, <laughs> everybody here genuinely seems to care about literally everything about me. I know everybody got come in and have an adjustment with the doctors, you know, they're always concerned about how I'm feeling and, you know, and always more than happy to share with me how, how we're progressing. And, uh, you know, the rest of the staff, uh, I've got to know each and every one of the uh, uh, girls, you know, by name, and they're always more than help, helpful, always willing to, you know, help and direct. Uh, some of these things I can actually do myself without bothering them, but uh, I, uh, 
I look forward to coming to the uh, you know to each appointment there because I'm treated so very well. I've never been treated like this in a medical doctor's office, so I'm. I, I can truthfully say <laughs> I'd much rather come here than go to the medical doctors and get more medicine, I'll put it that way. And would you recommend corrective chiropractic to other people? I definitely would. I mean, I you know, didn't really realize early on chiropractic was really an option, uh, and I had been gone to the, the medical doctor. Uh, now that I've experienced it, and actually, you know, I, I am much, much better, I'll put it that way, than I was. I would uh, heartily recommend anybody who has uh, problems and uh, before, you, before you start taking a lot of medicine, explore a chiropractic. It's certainly, certainly worth your time. Well, Ed, thank you very much for your testimonial today. Thank you, Shirley.